prosperous farms of Hawke's Bay are threatened by a plague of rabbits. History reveals how serious this threat is. The catastrophe these vermin caused in the past is best described in the words of James Beck, a run holder. In the early 60s, rabbits were first established in Southland and Otago after many unsuccessful attempts by individuals and acclimatization societies. By 1874, they had made their presence felt. By 1878, they had overrun Southland and Otago. By 1888, their evil effects were to be seen over hundreds of square miles. The grasslands were almost totally destroyed, becoming little better than a desert. Sheep perished in hundreds of thousands, and the majority of squatters were ruined, while immense areas of grazing land were abandoned as owners gave up the unequal struggle with rabbits. For over 50 years, the Hawke's Bay Rabbit Board maintained a continuous killer campaign against rabbits so effectively that inspectors destroyed a handful on their rounds each month. Thus did the farmer safeguard their living from the land and the land itself. And then came the war. Attention was diverted to an all-out war effort, but owing to the shortage of labor, the war against rabbits was relaxed and the counter-attack by rabbits was overwhelming. Breeding at the traditional rabbit rate has resulted in their teeming millions becoming a very real threat to farming in Hawke's Bay. Rabbits literally eat everything and strip the earth bare. So bare that sheep and cattle starve and farming is no longer possible. Prior to the invasion by rabbits four years ago, Big Hill Station carried 6,000 sheep. Since the invasion, the alternatives were abandonment or sale. The station was sold, but the new owner can't stock it. There is no fee. After the war, the rabbit board took up the challenge and adopted the only proved policy, a killer policy, in fighting the worst pest ever introduced to New Zealand. Inspections were made and operations geared to the level of the maximum rate which could be levied on the land. Expert rabbiters from the South Island were engaged on an organized poisoning campaign throughout the district. The rabbits are fed on a plowed line at least twice with jam, an appetizer that is readily eaten if the rabbits are not disturbed. And now the rabbiter carefully mixes strychnine powder with the jam, which camouflages its bitter taste. Care is the watchword in handling such deadly poison. Dawn breaks to reveal how effectively and remorselessly strychnine takes its toll. But death to rabbits means life to pastures and livestock, and more food for starving people overseas. Rabbiters must gather their harvest early to prevent hawks from damaging the skin. a lot of walking and packing involved in handling a catch of 2,000 rabbits. are dumped. Tallies of this size are commonly taken two or three times a week, 
and have resulted in the destruction of two million rabbits in two years in the board's district. Quite a fair contribution to the 16 million rabbits killed in New Zealand annually. However, there are still millions more to be killed before the board brings these vermin under control. Even Snowball and Black Bess know their faces as they shift their weight from one foot to the other during the unloading ceremony. measured stroke, the rabbiter whets his knife with an air of satisfaction as he tackles hours of arduous work skinning the harvest of dead villains. Practice makes perfect. The novice is lucky if he can skin six rabbits an hour. The expert, with deft strokes and a flick of the wrists, skins 200 per hour. welcome and even more justified during this than most jobs. The present high prices for skins assists materially in financing rabbit destruction where boards prevent farming of rabbits. The skins are turned to keep the pelt moist for stretching at a later stage. Poisoned carcasses are an invitation to suicide to dogs and cats, and many valuable animals are poisoned by eating carcasses not collected by the rabbiters. In this case, safety first consists of burying deeply all carcasses' skin. Interestingly enough, carcasses that are immediately gutted, cleaned and dried in the sun for several days are no longer poisonous to dogs. You can almost hear the sigh of relief and sense their feeling of achievement as the rabbiters pack the skins and prepare for home after handling one of their biggest kills. But the day's work is by no means completed. Back at the camp, the skins are fatted. That is, adhering pieces of fat and flesh are removed prior to wiring them or stretching them over specially shaped pieces of wire. Pairs of large skins are hung out to dry. Small skins are stretched over wires that have been pushed into the ground.
When the skins are thoroughly dry, the wires are removed and the skins are bundled and packed in sacks for marketing. And who wouldn't enjoy a wash and a hearty meal after such a day's work? However, poisoning alone will not rid land of rabbits. It must be followed up by every means at the board's disposal. Trapping is quite an efficient method of still further reducing the rabbit population. And trapping is quite a professional business. Traps are set at chosen haunts of the rabbit, either on its tracks, near its burrows, or on dry knobs, where marks indicate frequent visits. Setting the trap attractively for the wily rabbit in such a way that its curiosity overcomes its suspicion is quite an art, built on experience and the study of rabbit psychology. If you doubt the rabbiter's unerring ability, just ask this rabbit. Trapping is most effective in the drier and warmer seasons. And as with other methods, the best catches are made if the rabbits are not disturbed between the board's operations. And still another method must be found for those cunning stay-at-home rabbits. For them, the board employs another technique, fumigation. Deadly cyanogas fumes emanate from this potion placed in the burrow or warren and enclosed there by filling in all the openings. If all burrows and warrens are treated simultaneously, Fumigation provides a very effective means of killing all the rabbits in a given area. Later, the dead rabbits can be recovered by digging a short distance to where they've struggled to escape. And now for a more sporting method of ridding the land of the remaining rabbits. And can these dogs guess what to do? Long before they arrived, the dogs seemed to have made up their minds, judging by the stampede out of the trailer and into action. And again the chase is on. Pluto and his friends are in their element. Finally, shooting and hunting are effective in cleaning up the odd surviving rabbits. Natural enemies, such as introduced cats, weasels, ferrets, and the native hawk, maintain a constant vigil to assist in keeping rabbits in check 
particularly when they're not numerous. Runs on this hill country, from Waikarara and Paparangi to Karuru and Big Hill, have suffered severely, as this class of country is an ideal breeding ground for rabbits. The fight to save Hawke's Bay from this pest must go on, because rabbits are so destructive. Even cabbage trees are not spared the poisonous tooth of the rabbit. Not a boulder, but trimmed or fashioned, if you like, in a new style by hungry rabbits. More succulent grass and clover pastures are eaten out. There is no feed left for cattle and sheep when rabbits take charge, and starvation of stock means abandonment of farming. But to add insult to injury, the repercussions of a rabbit plague go further than ruin of grass and farming land, because rabbits ruin the soil itself. Bare soil has no stability. It falls an easy victim to soil erosion. The scraping and burrowing of rabbits loosens a continuous supply of powdery soil that is readily blown away. Further bare soil is washed away by rains, and the topsoil is stripped off by sheet erosion and rabbit burrows encourage the scarring of gullies. Is this to be the fate of thousands more acres in Hawke's Bay? The cycle of inevitable ruin from rabbits to bare soil to abandoned land to soil erosion and flooding must be halted or counterparts of this eroded hill country will be found on land that is today farmed but overrun by rabbits. Not only have the two million rabbits killed to date deprived Britain of 10 million pounds of mutton and lamb and a million pounds of wool, but they have done untold damage to the pastures and sills of Hawke's Bay. The country cannot afford to let this vital rabbit killing campaign relax. Rather, it must be intensified to save our soil, our grass, and our farmers from ruin by rabbits. Thank you.